just something that I've noticed with like really great producers is like that like they're really good at like looping things and like making certain things like if you're working with audio right like let's say you get a good take of a drummer like a live drummer and they do like a good like you know bar, like two bars right like if you can really make that sound good for two bars and then loop it forever it's going to be like imperfect because it's a live drummer but it's going to sound perfect because it's looped like exactly the right way so i don't know it's just an important concept that i think about a lot like um you know finding ways to like perfect things that are imperfect and like get them like stuck um it's like putting them into the grid kind of but so yeah this is not the most complicated melody let's see if we can make the sound itself a little cooler um this is just like a, an initial preset like i don't really know like i'm not going to spend too much time on sound design here right now but Somebody told me once to do, uh, when you're doing multiple voices, do like an odd number because then there's one in the middle. <laughs> I don't know. That's something I do ever since someone told me that. So. comfortable with delay um like normal ableton delay um and this is like i was saying yesterday like i'll put delay on everything like just some sort of delay will sound cool on most things <laughs> And this is another thing I think maybe I'll talk about this more with like space, like the day of the day of like when we're talking about mixing space, but um, a lot of times I'll just throw everything through like the send, like the reverb send, just because I prefer listening to it like that. It's just a little easier to just imagine the future. Like this could sound really big and cool with some sort of reverb, but it's not necessarily what I'm going to leave it at. It's just kind of like me kind of like doing it while I listen. Um, but a cool hack that I figured out is like just kind of doing like almost like a little too much reverb. And then, um, you know, this will be kind of towards the end of the process, but let's say I have like 10 things going through the reverb, um, just turning the whole reverb set down because a lot of times, like, like I just, songs just get drenched in reverb because it's like the easiest way to make things sound like better i guess like people just think like well if i put everything through a bunch of reverb <clears throat> it'll sound better um but then it just kind of gets this like muddy sound and i think that if you're doing your job right and like along the way you're like really making sure that all your sounds are good sounds um you just kind of like at the end you just kind of like pull the whole send down and you get to hear your whole track kind of like what it actually sounds like without the reverb and it's a really cool feeling because it's like it's just a really easy way to be like, I mean, this one has reverb on the, on here, which I don't really want right now. But I kind of like it better. Like, you know, it's already, it sounds cleaner without the reverb, but it's just like, while I'm writing, I still like to like hear a bunch of reverb. So, all right, cool. So we have a little melody going here. It's not the coolest thing in the world, but it's like something to work with. Um, another thing I want to do maybe is like pull this down here 
and figure out like a chord progression that we could do with this. Um, it seems like we're in like some sort of minor scale. So usually what I do is just make a MIDI thing. I'm gonna keep freezing stuff as I go just because of Zoom, but <clears throat> so with this one, we could call this like chords. And this is like our jumping off point because these are the notes that we've used so far. So like usually I'll just like, just go grab like the notes that are here. And then like quantize them somehow. It's just like straight up. This doesn't even have an instrument yet, but um, you know, it looks like it's just a bunch of E's and F's. So it's not like that crazy. It's probably not gonna sound like a chord, but sometimes if you have like a little bit more like, I mean, maybe we should just make the melody more interesting before we do this. Um, Let's do like part two. Let's do like, I always like to say, like what, what, what I was saying earlier, like bail on your ideas. Like I'm gonna essentially bail on this, but it's here. Like it could be the intro. It could be something that I use later, but um, I'm not really thinking about the linear like structure of the song yet. Um, so like with this one, like just for the sake of like putting more notes into it, like let's like, let's just draw some notes in like, I think of notes I haven't used yet and like the way I'm doing this is kind of just like years of like choir practice I guess like I know I know what notes will like fit key so if you need help doing this you know that's why I kind of showed you um, MIDI effects like you can go grab if you know like you're in a minor scale and you know like um, you have to know like where your starting pitch is but if I throw this on now it's probably going to mess up my melody but if you use this from the start, like let's say you set up so it's like the bass note is right, um, whatever, like you're, you're writing in the, in the scale that you're in the right scale, this will help you just not make any mistakes here. But the only problem with that is that like for this one, like this, this bass goes like dun, dun, has like a half note there. So, you know, this just, this isn't gonna be able to do that. Um, I guess I could make it do that by doing that, but um, I just kind of trust my gut because I know kind of over the years of like musical practice and like I definitely encourage like if you're new to music stuff in general, um, you know, piano lessons or like some sort of like basic music stuff that's not production um, will definitely hone your ear a little bit better for that. 